Welcome to the Satellite of Love. I'm Mike, and you're just in time for the final dress and tech rehearsal for Love Letters, yeah. starring Crow T. Robot Hello. and Tom Servo. Hello. You know, Love Letters is a lot like same time next year, only you don't have to remember any lines. <laughs> ready, guys? Yes, ready. And anytime. Dear Melissa, hi. How are you? I am fine. Remember when we met at college last year and fell in love? Sincerely, Andrew. Dear Andrew, I read your letter today and was overcome with love for you. By the way, I have married Stephen, but will probably grow apart. More later, Melissa. Dear Melissa, that's okay. I got married too, but I totally love you, Andrew. Dear Andrew, I'm having Stephen's baby, but I wanted to let you know that it's you that I love. Take care, Melissa. Dear Melissa, I turned middle-aged this week. I'm a rich wasp and I love you. All my best, Andrew. Dear Andrew, I'm a grandmother now. Stephen and I have grown apart. Go figure. I do so love you. Stay well, Melissa. Dear Melissa, my children have reproduced also. Our love endures through the years, huh? Boy, do I love you. Regards, Andrew. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was oh. fantastic. Oh, bravo really? and brava. No. I saw no. Stephanie Zimbalist Jr. and Chris Lemon do that, and they did not do it justice compared to you oh. two gentlemen. Oh, no, 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 no. Servo there was no, no, setting no, the lines crow, up so crow, crow, crow. No, no, Well, no, 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 theater no, no, no. Is, is a group <laughs> thing, and you were able to hold moment. Moment, oh, uh, a moment by moment is what theater is all about. And you held it. It was a very ephemeral thing, and it was almost not there, but it was there. You know, Servo, Crow, I'm not just a friend of yours. I'm a fan. Oh, hey, Ruth Gordon and Garson Kanan are calling. Oh, don't stop touching me. Uh, we're not ready. Uh, you go first. Hey, no problem. Our invention is you. I'm Dr. Clayton Forrester. And I'm TV's friend. See? <laughs> Cute. Uh, but I don't quite understand the... I'm Dr. Clayton Forrester, the one with the weak chin. I'm going to hit TV's Frank because of my deep resentment at my own limitations. I'm TV's Frank, and I'm going to take it because I have no self-confidence. <laughs> ow! 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 <laughs> <laughs> well, you do have kind of a weak chin. Forget the chin, Frank. Don't you see what's happening? We're losing their respect. It's all on the line here, man. We've got to do something and fast. <laughs> hey, we're just funning you. Shall I hit you again, TV Frank? Oh, please do. <laughs> Ow. Ow, not so hard. <laughs> All right, Frank, let him have it. I'm Tom Servo, and I'm a cute little guy with a round head. <laughs> and I've got these little adorable arms. <laughs> and I'm Crow T. Robot, and I'm gold, and I'm trapped in space. What a stupid color gold is. <laughs> <laughs> well, I trust you can see that two can play at that game, Nilsson. Anyway, your experiment this week is called the Atomic Brain. Plus, there's a short about the golden age of juvenile delinquency. <laughs> 
Oh, Frank, that's very good. You've almost got Tom down. Keep flapping those arms. <laughs> uh, you keep practicing, I'll get the button. I'm Dr. Clayton Forrester, and I've got my head stuck. Oh, 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 How are you? <laughs> hey, Sam the Eagle presents. Hey, it is. What about juvenile delinquency? That's a viable career option. Sure. Yep. Past president disbarred for delinquency. <laughs> and, of course, music by the Royal Delinquent Orchestra, Philip Grinnell conducted. Centron, the dawning of a new day. <laughs> ah, the Barton Milner gang. <coughs> oh, they're so clammed into. Here he comes. Here's my dad to pick us up. <laughs> Come on, guys, let's go study. Woo. Where are we heading? Tell you when we pick up Jamie. In other words, you don't know. Hmm. I'm sure glad we got the car washed. <laughs> <laughs> Cannonball run, well within the speed limit. What's that guy waiting for? Hmm? Give him a bomb. Yeah. Yeah. Gordon, jump. Turn him again. I'll cut it out. We're getting a jam. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, move it! Oh, cars were made to take it back then. What do you folks think you're doing anyway? Uh, our Maytag broke, sir. What was that you called us? I just bought that car. Now look. He's <laughs> changing into the Incredible Hulk. When good-natured ribbing goes too far. Hmm. <gasps> they flattened him! Oh, oh. Oh, Willard Scott, I'll gently polish you. <laughs> Should have just enough time to get into my Bo Peep outfit. Ka -dink, ka -dink, ka -dink. What does she live at, Shakey's? <laughs> oh, Mom, dusting is so bourgeois. Did you have any homework, Jamie? And quit playing that ragtime. Oh, no. Going out. As soon as the guys come by to get me. Ruth and J.D. Hare. It's already after eight. <laughs> I don't know why you can't stay home for one evening. Oh, Ma, I can see up your dress. <laughs> A little bit. Should be home now. Just where is it you're going, Jamie? Crack house. Why? I knew I'd tell you. I don't know. Don't kill your father. Well, at least my dress matches the wallpaper. Uh -huh. Who are the dark teens? Darkness, darkness. Who was it? A dry cleaner. One hour, guys. Let's martinize. Use the doors, please. You start out not using the doors, and next thing you know, you're beating up Gordon Jump. Norm! 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 <laughs> All right, Bridge Club. What do you have, boys? I'll write your orders with my new pencil. Hey, those are great. My dad's got one just like it. Where'd you get it? <laughs> Shop and save. <laughs> we just swarmed all over a guy. Fell out of his pocket. What? When did this happen? Just before we picked you up. We bumped some guy in a big Buick and he gets out and starts getting smart. Yeah, yeah that's smart. Man. Yeah. Boy, did we give it to him. We sure messed him up. You should have been there, Jamie. <laughs> Who was he? I don't know, some big bald headed guy. Do you smell onions? What kind of a car did you say it was? Oh, it was uh, a. The Ford Lac. What's the matter with you? I asked you what kind of a car it was. I want to know. It was a yellow Buick. Why? Just trying to draw you out. You want some fries? A Fisher Space Pen. What do you want to know for, Jamie? Where's the little delinquent's room? Get this thing off me. You're going to miss the soup of the day, jerk. What's his trouble? I don't know, but this isn't the place to find out. The no shoulder game. We'll see him in the morning at school when we give this to him. We got to get better patches. Oh? Oh, ow! Oh, dear, it's just lemon juice. Oh, ow! Jamie. How's Dad? How did you know? He's always been my dad. I, I heard it over the radio. How is he? He'll be all right. He's kind of rubbery. He's resting now. Or he's dead. It's hard to tell with him. He was terribly shaken up and bruised, though. And they took his pencil pouch. Oh, it makes me sick to think about. When did his nose get mildewed? Jamie. Massage me, will you? I'm sorry, Dad. 
I'm sorry. I'm sorry I'm not the daughter you want. nothing for you to be sorry about, son. Mm. Wasn't your fault. Yeah, the next weekend, Dad's golf buddies come and beat up Jamie. Son, you have angel hair pasta on your shirt. I wonder if this is going to get melodramatic. Okay, come on, I'll take you both on. I'm all right now. You'd better get upstairs to bed. Yeah, I'll be up in a minute. I'm sorry, now, Dad. Now, at this point here, the, the, the mood shifts to a lovely adagio. It's fantastic. You expecting a flood, son? It's just upstairs and to the left, son. It always was. We're alone. Love me. It's the eye of the t oh boy. You brought your taste to shake. It's a bellboy convention. <laughs> Better take this back, Jamie. We didn't know it was your dad, Jamie. We wouldn't have done it if we'd known. Leave me alone. Take it, Jamie. You keep it. We're trying to say we're sorry. I don't want anything more to do with it. Now, look, Jamie, don't get smart. Don't forget, you could have been along instead of one of us. Could have been one of our dads. Tell you what, you can beat up well, my dad. see me moping around if it had been my old man. Don't worry. I'm not forgetting a thing. What? Just count me out from now on. There he is. Ah, Jamie, my backup's here. I want to talk to you. He's busy. Did you, you have an appointment? Morning, Jamie. Have you read about the special session of the city council they're having this morning? Station? And all the things they're talking about doing. A curfew, upping the age of driver's licenses, canceling the football games, the parties, the dances, and everything else. And there's witches. Fair, Jamie. Most of the high school Ooh. students haven't had anything mm. to do with the things that have been happening. Like last night. And the statue that was broken, and the theater seats, and all that. And the Suez Canal all incident. To suffer for it. I didn't have anything to do with it either. And don't look at us. We didn't kick over any statues. You've got to help us, Jamie. Well, what do you expect me to do? No, 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 Leave me out of everything you're planning. All I want to do is mind my own business. But this is your business, Jamie. You heard him. He's not going anywhere. He's no sap. We're going to the city council. <laughs> <laughs> right now, you guys are more afraid than we are, but you're not fooling us. You think you can laugh Ooh. at anybody who stands up to you. Partner. And pretty soon, everyone else is laughing at us. And you ne think you've won. Next card, please. Thank you. Well, I don't care if you laugh or not. It won't be funny if the city council does what they're talking about. I wouldn't advise any of you to go to that meeting if I were you. I'm warning you. Are you going with us, Jamie? No, he's not. I'm talking to Jamie. Torn between two peer groups. What do you want me to do? They'll listen to you, Jamie, because it was your dad that... <gasps> Awkward. Permit me to sing something from oh, Man of La Mancha. You're not going anywhere. <gasps> Martha Graham, run! You boys haven't been moving the stuff very well. Mm -hmm. I'm watching you. This is my turf now. Pete, Link, Julie, and Steve? <laughs> Whoa, banana peel. I call shotgun. No, 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 wrong way, wrong way. way. Right, right. Back up. There we go. There. Elliot Nesson is untouchables. We're in hot pursuit. Get to the helicopter, the helicopter. Meanwhile, back at the convent. This is 100% pure democracy. OK, everybody, hurry up and vote. Come on. Whoa, hold on. Let me get some literature. What's the rush? There's going to be three hours of zoning stuff first. We're not talking about pranks and letting off steam. We're talking about criminal acts of violence. We're talking about trouble right here in River City. We're around beating up people and wrecking things to prove how tough they are. Then it's time we prove to them just how tough we are. Right, you know, tell them right. Something? I'm, I'm sorry. What's all I... this? Do you have some facts to give us that we don't already have? I don't know whether you'd call them facts or not, but, well, Everybody keeps talking about teenagers as if we were a bunch of freaks or something. We're just wasting time. We wasted too much time already. Kill them We've all. invited Mr. McPherson here. He's principal of the high school. And he can tell us anything these kids can tell us. No, no, I'm sorry, I can't. I'm too noodly. 
That's why when these students came to me today, I asked them if they'd be willing to come down here and put their case before you. Is that okay? And I think you should hear what they have to say. I give you cheetah This is Bill Stilwell, the head of the student council, and Chuck Leewood, captain of our football team. And Sally Lawrence here, uh, senior class president. And she's a girl. And Jamie's, Jamie's dad was the one who got hurt last night. Mr. Mayor. I love you. I think Mr. McPherson's right. And I think these students are right, too. Teenagers aren't all delinquents. Only a few are involved in these criminal acts that we're all concerned about. If these teenagers, who represent all of the rest, have the courage to come here, then I think we should not only listen to them, but I think we should invite Obey them, them to help us stamp out this vandalism. I say let's let them talk. I say let's put them to the spanking machine. Oh, yes. And Tony Bozai is introduced. We don't want to punish all teenagers for the trouble a few are causing. Just you. But something has to be done. You know how serious the juvenile delinquency problem has become. We have to take some action to prevent this sort of thing from happening again. Why, he's quite good. Now, if you have some suggestions to offer, we're willing to listen to you. And then kill what you. What can we do? And what can you do to prevent Forest juvenile fires. delinquency? You tell us. Hmm? They called our bluff. What do we do? I think they're still talking about stoning stuff. I offer myself as a virgin sacrifice. <laughs> what would huh? you do if you were Jamie? That's Prince's new name, isn't it? Yeah, that's Frank Gorshin's new name. Delinquency? What would you say? What would you say? <laughs> young American, young American. He was a young American. Oh! Here it is. Can okay. death be outwitted? Like sands through the hourglass. the secret of eternal life just around that corner. Today, medical science patches up mutilated bodies, transplanting human skin, eyes, limbs, even vital organs. Golgi apparatus. Is the next step the transplantation of the human brain? The pantry of the Many future. scientists answer yes, but they pause and add a grim warning. Oh, here are the papers. For in the ancient folk legends, tales are told of blood-sucking vampires. Ooh crawling out of graves to live on the bodies of helpless victims. But that's another movie. Is man now doomed to produce a race of ever-living monstrosities? Mm -hmm. Worse than the vampires I, of legend. Hey, wait a minute. The ruthless men and She's women of nude. great and power Lady. greedily buy or steal the living bodies of the young and beautiful so their brains may live on forever. Mm -hmm. Such questions may seem fanciful. Or downright stupid. But at this very moment, scientists are working on the answer to brain transplantation. That's not all and they're working human on. human bodies are used. But enough about me. This girl was buried in a nearby cemetery yesterday. That's not a girl. Only a few hours ago, her body was stolen. Now that's a girl. Well, by Dr. Otto Frank. And brought to this hidden laboratory. Are you looking laboratory. at this? <laughs> he has grafted a living animal's brain into this newly dead body. What a knuckle knob. <laughs> if the experiment works, the next step will be the transplantation of a human brain. And if it doesn't work, it's the compost heap. The brain cells are being reactivated by an atomic fission produced in the cyclotron. Isn't that a ride at the State Fair? Cyclotron. <laughs> and the time's up. How much of your risk? All of it? Ooh. Do not adjust your dryer. We control your air fluff. <laughs> Has he found the way to outwit death? Dirk Pearson? Or has he created another? What? What? Another what? I'm a doctor, yeah. My name is Chad. I like to wear this stupid hat. <laughs> huh? Oh. You know, guys, people are just dying to get in there. <laughs> know how many people are buried in there? Oh. All of them. Oh. Ah. My dad, thank you. <laughs> it's like Joe Orton would meet someone there. <laughs> Hey, keep it quiet in there. Ha, just kidding. Love that one. It's Barney moonlighting. Yeah, I thought I'd take Thelma Lou over to Mount Pilot for a picture show. Deep below, ah, Dr. Yeah. Frank takes the chance of smashing his way into a newly sealed vault. His experiments cannot continue without another body. It's Christmas at the vault. Oh, nice. It's a Gary Coleman memorial. <laughs> Whoa, whoa. Hey, 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 hey. hey. Oh, it's a 
The watchman's mind was not on body snatchers. Oh, Starsky Just and his Hooch. usual nip. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, that's good expectorant. <laughs> well, back to reading the Bridges of Medicine Cut. What the? Heck is that clarinet coming from? Pete Fountain? Today we're uh, renovating the crypt here and... Stephen Stills! That's what he's always wanted to do to David Crosby. Oh. <laughs> <I see. laughs> well, that's a delightfully whimsical murder. <laughs> the body waits. I'm waiting. Got a coconut head on. <laughs> Galway, Rampa, they're flute police. Galway, you started that trill on the upper note. Someone get a doctor. What? Wait, I am a doctor. <laughs> Does it hurt when I do this? This is one of the doctor's mistakes, a monstrosity. An animal's brain grafted to a human body. In retrospect, an obvious Leaving the mistake. dead watchman, the monstrosity carried the girl's body out of the vault. It fears and obeys one master. Tony Orlando. Dr. Frank. Kinstein. We gotta get some light in here, boy. Someone could get hurt. They seem real organized. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Taxi! Boss, was I really a mistake like the man said? Oh, no, you were a little miracle. Mm -hmm. And so the little fellow carted the corpse away. It's rather a casual look for a grave robber. Nice. It probably has espadrilles on or a nice mm -hmm. loafer. Yeah. Weekend at Bernie's, the Armageddon. Are those my good sheets? Those are my 300 per count per kales. Now it's Mississippi burning. Oh, I miss the voice of the guy. Well, what are you hungry for? Any place that's got curly fries. Well, it's a quiet night here at Lake Wobegon. They're arriving at Jim Dine's house. Mm, oh. Special <laughs> dual action glove box. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We don't buy this. Coming this Christmas. Selznick International Pictures. <laughs> now they're sneaking Marilyn into the White House. Ooh. Got cars got bad rings or something. Bad pickup. I don't know. <laughs> uh -uh, cripes, the warden's up. Must be watching Chevy Chase or something. Well, I had a really nice time tonight. I hope we can do it again sometime. Wolfie, honey. Here beneath the old mansion, the doctor carefully prepared for another transplant. A pot roast. This body had been in the vault for only a few hours. Chances seemed better this time. Still, Dr. Frank was doubtful. Tissue and dead bodies deteriorates rapidly. Where were the live, fresh bodies he'd been promised? Why, straight from your grocer's freezer. He bitterly resents that every step forward depends on the whim of a miserly old woman brooding upstairs in her bedroom. Chug it! Finish it! All the way! Has she been a fool squandering money on this strange experiment? Money hoarded through a long, greedy lifetime, each day more money, each day death getting closer. Ah, but to start life again with a brand new body. Beautiful and young. No price can be too high for that. I'm drunk too. Can she really now. trust the doctor? Can she really trust anyone? Hasn't everyone tried to cheat her? I can't even trust Wanting those money blinds. When they smiled at her yes. ugliness. But they never got a penny. Oh, how she made them sweat. In those satin Especially tenements. this old fool, companion and gigolo. How many years she's kept him dangling on promises. Well, sometimes it's convenient to have a man, especially when he comes cheaper than servants. The strange loves of Martha Washington. The Austrian girl? Dino Road, 18, no family, pleasing personality, hmm. whatever that might mean. Hmm? Thick ankles, pimply face. But she always smiles when she's spoken to her. Wow. Well, application forms for a servant girl don't usually include bust, waist, and hip measurements. Except at Hooters. Ooh. All three will be here tomorrow, and then you can choose. 
Greenhaven Cemetery, the body snatchers brutally murdered night watchman Robert Whoa, Payne, hey, shh, 62, this is us, this who is evidently us. interrupted his killers during their ghoulish task. His neck was broken. <laughs> the imprint of the huge pair of hands was found on his throat. It's the opinion of the police. Oh, that God, the I hate that Michael Feldman. Uh, what do you know? Bring the doctor, Yes. So that's what he was doing. So then, with just this little weather kit, you've transformed yourself into uh, what was it again? Weather Servo 9, first to bring the satellite of love of vital weather information that affects you. You know, I appreciate that, but uh, there's very little weather in space, and besides, we have instruments that handle all that. Servo, you're gonna die in space. <laughs> Hey, I might not. That's right, Crow. Now raise Weather Servo 9 into space, and I'll report the weather as it happens to you. It doesn't happen to us. We're protected by a satellite. Just send the poor dope out to space. Don't die! Up to the minute forecast for Weather Servo 9. Boy, it's cold out here. Is it supposed to be this cold? Oh, don't be afraid. You're Weather Servo 9. Servo, just make your report and then get back in here, okay? Well... Before I get out of the weather, I've got a couple of birthdays to announce. <laughs> I'm just kidding, of course. Man, is it cold out here. He's dead meat. Yep. Oh, I guess the big news is the cold weather. <laughs> you might want to take a jacket. <laughs> it's cold. Whoa, what's this? <laughs> Looks like a meteor shower is going to be coming by. I <laughs> might warm things up a bit. <laughs> It'll probably pass just to the north of us, but you might want to... Ah! Looks like it's not working. Pam, you better show me rocket number nine. Well, that'll happen. Servo, are you all right? Servo, buddy, speak to me. Well, I'm not cold anymore. I better start fixing you up. Wow, you look so cool, Servo. Hey, Mike, can I do that? No, do you that. can't. You cannot next. do that. We'll next. be right back. Weather station. Help. <laughs> Head happens to be on fire. Might want to try that. Hmm. <laughs> Hope you're okay. <clears throat> this just in. Ha! Ah, it's Jersey Kosinski. <laughs> this goes goes. Romper stomper bomper boo. Boy, Mike, you know, public access TV just is not very good. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Oh. <gasps> hey, there's a naked lady in this movie, and she's nude, with no clothes on. Sounds like the printer's stuck. Ah, hmm. oh, darn, I need another quarter. Oh, whenever I put this suit on, I got a tinkle. Oh, I gotta start those new potatoes. And Mark Rock. You know, Jamie Gum only dreamed of achieving what this guy has. Oh, who died in here? It... Point of law. Miss Marple arrives. Murder most goofy. Got another nudie on the slab. More of it, focus, focus, Eddie. The doctor transplanted a brain from a live dog to a dead human body. Can you stand you it? You saw the creature walk out of that cylinder alive. How many failures since then? Ooh. Still draw money. <coughs> oh, oh, hi. Didn't right. hear the bell. Okay, can we get a level, please? The specimen is excellent. And the police are looking for the Ma, body. Ma, don't doctor. hit, please. By the local cemetery, doctor, are you trying to blaze a trail to our door? The final test was essential for your protection. As for the police, if they come here, I hit this switch, a nuclear reaction is set off. Oh, well, that makes sense. What? Breaker, uh. And in a matter of minutes, this house and any evidence it might contain becomes a radioactive hole in the ground. Be careful. Now, is there a way we could live and still that. evade the police? Well, nothing must go wrong. Gee, she's the battle axe Potemkin. Yeah. There's no sign of life. Now, look who's what? talking. What? 
can't wait till I'm her. Now, don't look at her chest ecological region. Did I get really dead last night? She's sort of alive! Oh, just radiate the whole room, please. The Joshua Light Show. He likes but one thing. Big hunky me. The brain. Man, he's picky. Hans was still living when he was dragged from that red car. That's why we succeeded with the transplant. Let's see, what else can I do around here? Do you need the eyes? She is, to a limited extent. She'll be able to move around, but the brain deterioration is too extensive for thought processes. Hey, hey, don't tease the corpse. I am trying to sleep. Fluid from Miami beat me OSD. Couldn't get the balance. The Boeing 707, the pack mule of the American skies. Sheep like passengers, too stupid to appreciate technologies inherited from long range bombers. Bye, Grab. I hope you enjoy this exchange. Scandinavian Airlines. I see. <laughs> Wilma! <laughs> Atomic butt. <laughs> Mrs. Wiggins! Oh, this thing needs a rest. Sykes. Pardon me, but how far is Hollywood from here? And could you tell me where my accent is from? Come on, come on! All right, let's see. <laughs> oh, the Schlossen cut off. Ooh. About ten miles. Which way? That way. Are you going to Hollywood? No such luck. I'm what's known as a born domestic. For the next 12 months, I'll be scrubbing floors and making beds. But when my time's up, Hollywood will look out. All right, we're That's warned. Strange. A foreign domestic agency paid my passage, too. I'm from Vienna, Austria. Uh-huh. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. I'm from England. No. Is this your first oh, trip? We have yes. an official bevy. I'm so excited. <laughs> Por favor. <laughs> yeah. This <laughs> English very good. You're all from Nebraska. Cut it out. Hand over your wallet promptly. Now well, I better do it. Your mission, Mr. Phelps, should you decide to accept it, is to pick up these three foreign women at the L.A. International Airport. Should you or any of your oh, I.M. Yeah, it goes on like that, we know. All right. Are you going to work for Mrs. March, too? Yes, I mean, this see... This sister act. Hmm. Mrs. Bat Guano, if it really is you your too? name. Nina Road. Yo. Yes, sir. Anita Gon Gonzalez. Right at ya. Kirby Pocket. Beatrice Mullins, sir. Eh? That's right. Are you Mr. March? No, I work for Mrs. March. Come along. It's Alexander's Ragtime Band. Three new bodies, fresh, live, young bodies. This fall on NBC. No families or friends within thousands of miles. No one to ask embarrassing questions when they disappear. The facts of life go to Europe. Not that I've seen it. <laughs> They're <laughs> off to a murder in sunny California. LA is a great big freeway. Put a hundred dollars. Victor wondered which one Mrs. March would pick. The little Mexican, the girl from Vienna, or the buxom blonde. Or the racist announcer. Victor knew his pick, but he still felt uneasy. Making love to an 80-year-old woman in the body of a 20-year-old girl is <laughs> insanity. Oh, they do it every day in L.A. Still, had his plan to transfer her fortune to the new body had been brilliant. Unpleasant to think of what was going to happen to these girls, but a man has to consider his own future. Hey, you're rationalizing. What would happen to him if Hetty were to cast him off after all these years? Blanche, no! <laughs> I am not sharing a room with Beth, well, am I? Well, they hang out. Well, there's your new home, girls. The Pygmalion sisters. <sighs> Gives me the shivers. Aren't there any neighbors? When nope. you get close to an accent, let us know. <laughs> Are there any other servants? 
No, but I don't think you're going to find it boring. That's three down and seven to go. Bennett Surf. <gasps> Trumpy, you can do magic. <laughs> Clara Peller in Rear Window. Weird window. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, ah! <laughs> I'll get it. Got to do everything around here. Meow. You have cats, don't you? What a jolly little place this is. I said place because I'm English. Dick Van Dyke had a better English accent. That's Spanish for, ah! Hurry along, hurry up. Now go. It's a 20-year Charlie's Angels reunion. <laughs> uh, I should have pledged Lambda Chi Omega. And this is the room where the President Kennedy and I had the ball for the Spanish ambassador. Go on ahead, I'll meet you there. Pay the respects to the pre-dead. Blurman! Oh. I know you're looking at my dew lab. Put all your luggage. Tonight on a very special Grandma Ironside. <laughs> okay, who's bunking with me? Uh, you want to see my resume, maybe? What are you, Mrs. Penguin? Get the thing away from me. Turn round. Oh, wow. Slowly. <laughs> Get the doctor. Get the doctor. I could be the doctor. I'll be the doctor. <laughs> Blimey. Hey. Yeah, what's giving somebody else a crack of that ball, huh? Oh, right in the middle of splicing recombinant DNA. I'm never gonna. Oh. <laughs> Messy. Well, yeah, I wouldn't live here. Well, hey, he's got one of those. Huh. As with the other bodies stolen from cemeteries, the nerve endings of the brain were too far gone to receive a proper transplant. The experiment had failed to produce anything more than a walking, breathing, zombie-like creature. But the doctor permitted her to wander about the laboratory. She was quite harmless and, at times, Nude. even amusing. Charming, isn't she? Did you want something? Um, her? Uh, Mrs. March is waiting for you. The girls have arrived. Yeah, now I'll stay here and supervise the zombie. She doesn't have a brain. She'd make a good news anchor. Might be advantages. Oh, thank you, Orrin Hatch. Yeah, the old bat smells like, oh, hi! <laughs> I want them examined immediately. Very well. This way. Did you go over our job description again? I'm foggy on that. Come here, I feel Victor, frisky. the doctor can conduct the examination perfectly. <laughs> what an old spoiled spot I am. <laughs> woman diapered Rose Kennedy. Have you disconnected the phone? Can't I depend on you for anything? Won't it be nice when those girls start calling police? Employment agencies, immigration authorities, Zoom. consulates. There will be no phone calls. We have a winner. Look, look at here. There was a zit, but I squeezed it. Oh, God. West Virginia? Idiot. She's useless. There is one more test I should make. Do anything you want with her. The other two? Perfect medical specimens. Wow. All right, Anita. Get dressed now and wait for the others. Let's see. I'm scared. So we change partners. It's Maggie the Mrs. Cat March, auditions. I am now giving you notice. I do not care to work in this house any longer. I demand that... You have signed an agreement. If you have any objection, you will discuss them with the immigration authorities as provided for in your papers. But Mrs. March... Later. Willard Scott's going to read my name on TV. Stand up, my dear. I've got the same measurements as Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> uh -huh. 
See? There's the, the hickey from Bobby Kennedy. Man. <laughs> Raoul Wallenberg. She had a May-December <clears throat> romance with U.B. Blake. <laughs> the lucky girl? Yeah. Allow me to be the first to offer congratulations. You've been fondled <laughs> by Mildred Natwick. To both of you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. For me? Walls and everything? Wow, you shouldn't have. You got me a Motel 6. Oh. Hmm? What? There's a xylophone built in that bed. Ow! Ow. Oh, Ooh, nice recovery. <laughs> now you two get the not as hot as her suite. Come on. Come on. Now listen carefully, runners up. In the event that the blonde woman is unable to fulfill her duties as the old woman's new body, the first runner up will be asked to continue on in those duties. <laughs> now up to Kathy Lee. <laughs> Your room is in the basement, Anita. Nina, your room is upstairs, right across from the top of the stairs. The Continental breakfast at 8, and if you hear screaming, don't listen. Good night. I'll have to show you. Hey, Hervé Villachez's room. <laughs> See? Yeah, I got it. No, oh, this is the door to the optical track. Nothing too hard for the end of the the In Patigo. No, I think you mean vertigo. Uh, excuse me, there's a dog brain in my toilets. <laughs> Did I hear Ruth Underwood? I think it will be lonesome down there. Nonsense. You'll be all right. Go on. <laughs> it might smell a little damp, and don't mind the silverfish. I'm going to order the Bigfoot bash. Watson, I'm still here. Watson, I need you. This clock doesn't work. Ta-da. Thank you. Just a gigolo. Do -do 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 -do. But you're not using AT&T. Oh, the electromagnet has been destroyed, rendering the carbon grains and transmitter useless. Poopy. Mm. I know, I'll write for help. I was right. It really is lonely down here. Huh? Yeah, the microbrewery thing is really catching on. Da 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 da! Imperial Marjorie. All right, an hour off for Renegade and then back at it. It's time we stop. Hey, what's that sound? Everybody look what's going. Take over, Chewie. Hmm? Chewie, Chewbacca. Completely forgot what I came up here for. <laughs> How's Housekeeping. keeping? Bikinis. Bikinis? Hmm. Who is it? It's the plumber. I've come to fix your sink. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't she supposed to be wearing something tighter or flimsier or more revealing? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, that's the preferred route, but that's... Well, yeah. Not I can't believe you've never heard of a chin puppet. No, nope, not me. All right, well, I'll do the whole demo for you then, oh, okay? Uh, wonderful. Oh, the chin puppet, right? Right, a chin puppet. Hey, why don't you scramble around front there, and I'll do the whole stage okay. show for you, all right? You guys are going to love this. Mike, Mike, what are you doing uh, there, honey? Honey, Mike, Mike dear? Whoa. Whoa. Hey, how are you doing, and what do you know? Glad you could be here to see my show, yeah. Oh, oh my God. God. I, I don't get it. Everybody. Why are you upside you down? Fantastic. What, what, what's not to get? I'm a chin puppet. So, uh, on Earth, did you just go ahead and do this for people? Yeah. And they laughed? Well, sure, it's funny. Hey, you're a great crowd. Did you ever go on a date like that? Of course not. Hey, come on, you guys wanted to see this. Get into it. I know, but in our wildest dreams, we never imagined this. Come on, it's whimsical. It's odd and disturbing, <laughs> Mike. What would possess a person to do that? I just don't understand right. this. I, apparently, you're not suited to chin puppets. Let's just call the whole thing off. You know? Whoa! <laughs> Oh, now that's funny. Look at that. He's got an upside down face on his chin. <laughs> no, I get it. It's hilarious. I'm upside down. <laughs> well, I'm upside down. Well, I'm upside down. Oh, 
heavy little guy. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, are you okay? That wasn't I'm very sure nice. not in her room. Yes. Victor left a little while ago. Maybe she went with him. Look at those little no-neck monsters. She didn't get out of this prison without permission, that's for sure. Yes. But you would have said goodbye. Why should she? We only met her yesterday. All right. Why care about the welfare of others? I don't blame her for not wanting to sleep in the basement. That's British for basement. Why, well, a chunk of cream spinach. It's funny, though. Mrs. March wouldn't even listen when I asked to be dismissed. And then she kissed me full on the lips. I don't know why. What the hell is the this? I mean, it's baked me on. She doesn't even have any uniforms for us. See, what in the world do you think you're doing? He told us last night to clean and polish in here. Look at your hands. That will leave a stain on them. Now, now, don't argue. Go in and wash them immediately. Speaking of stains. You can put the things away after Nina cleans them. Oh, jam it, Aunt May. Mrs. March, where is Anita? Anita? The dead one? Oh. Shh. She accidentally dropped her brain she on the floor. Last night. I would like to give notice, too. I will discuss it with you. At the staff Another meeting. Another time. <laughs> I would give anything for that figure. Yes, it's disco night at Glam Slam. Come on down. <laughs> Lazarius. A hot tub is not relaxing with all those lights. No, no. Hey, Gandalf's down there. Hmm? Oh, with the smoke rings and all. Oh, brother, this guy. <laughs> well, I think they're done. Yeah. Nina, Quit listening to Nina, that stuff. Come here this instant. Oh, if only Richard Widmark were here. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm going to do it. I'm going to get airborne. 100% pure adrenaline. Yes, Mrs. March? Your name is it Nina. But Mrs. March, she's got polish all over hands, and I'm not doing anything. I don't want you running up and downstairs. Those pretty legs of yours will get ugly muscles. She likes big piano legs Send on her Nina to me. Who doesn't? Yes, ma'am. I'll be in my room. Here's Kathy, who's lived most everywhere. <laughs> from... <laughs> be come with me. What will we become? Oh, I don't think that's what... There, you see, there are signs of seepage down here. I want to show you something. They keep their Christmas decorations down here. It's amazing. Look at all the amenities that Anita got. Hmm. Anita wouldn't leave without taking her clothes. Well, have you seen I her think clothes? I would better get out of here, fast. B, I'd hate to go if she's still here. You go now if you go with May. May? Now who's May? I don't I understand. Don't know. Man, she's bossy. It's Trixie Belden and Honey. Here, I want to show you the tomatoes they put up in some watermelon rind pickles. Oh, that sounds good. The hinge is loose. Hmm. Help me. Now, where did you get that? I found it up there. Well, put that back. Stop crying. It's open! Is the atomic vet. God, I'm lumpy today. <laughs> One last experiment before Dr. Frank would be ready. But this was the most critical of all the experiments. For the first time, the grafting operation would be performed on a living human body. Wow. And the brain would come from the doctor's favorite cat. Jeez, imagine the size of the litter box. Anita was ready. Hmm? And Gene Shepard's voiceovers have gotten weird. This is the strangest bed and breakfast I've ever been to. It's me, Nina. 
Oh. What about your clothes? Never mind. Let's go. Here, get in. Did I hear someone packing? I thought packing would fulfill me, but now I just feel empty. Oh. Oh. The oboe represents the tension as they sneak away. Casper? <laughs> rolling, rolling, rolling. She's spinning donuts on the deep pile. Wow. B, she almost saw us. Let's wait a while to make sure we won't run into her. Mein Führer, I can walk! <laughs> ah, 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 Dr. Frank, quit leaving your skateboard on the stairs! <laughs> she's old, she's old, she's old, so old, old. Did Prokofiev do the music for this? Uh, yes, Ernie Prokofiev. Look out, she's old, she creaks and pops. Let's follow the whimsical adventures of Granny. <laughs> they're young, they're scared, young and scared, young. He, she, she's old. Look at how old she is. She creaks. She's so dang old. Let's go have some fish and chips. Never knew I had a basement. She's old. She's in the basement. Let's slide down the banister. It's fun. <laughs> Young, scared. Young, stewardesses. Scared. Bing. Young thing. Hey, that lady made sandwiches for the men working on the Sphinx. <laughs> Oh, heavens, my pacemaker. Damn. The Snoop Nieces. <laughs> young, young, ah, Dorothy Day! Oh, she's a nice lady. Now, come on, let's go upstairs. We're scared, we're young. B! A doobie! Well, this is going to be some chase scene. She's old, she's old, she creaks, she goes B. upstairs. B. <laughs> ah, good renegade tonight. Well, back at it. Dum, <laughs> dee dum, dee dum, dee dum. Oh, that thing. Wow. Now oh, I just love these Monday clan meetings. <laughs> Do I smell bacon? I see the lightning open the door. Hmm. It's a real complicated porta potty, isn't it? Mm. I wouldn't want one. Mm -mm. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Netherworld. Hey, no shoes, no brain, no service, lady. <laughs> it looks like uh, ultraviolet. What with the fronds. And... <laughs> Anyone want anything? B. Hi, MGO. B. Where are you? B34, bingo. Answer me. Do, 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 She's locked us in. Dialogue replacement playhouse. Open it. I said open it. No. I've got the keys down here. Selznick International presents. <laughs> That's nice. I love that one. <laughs> well, it seems our options are limited. Are you familiar with Rita Mae Brown? Wow. Here, let me adjust your aura. Get an intercom. Victor! In a minute. Da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. What? Well, you took long enough. 
crumpled old bitch. The lawyer will see you in the morning. I told him you were going to change your will. You're careful of this step here. You'll have to check the basement door. It broke loose. No, my life is getting more interesting by the minute. Talia Shire is Squeaky Frog. It's evil here. Run! Oh, hi. Your receptionist let us in. Hi. You failed. Oh, you got one of those, huh? El meow. <laughs> oh, isn't it cute? Yes, it is. Hey, yes. It's Liz Winstead. She thinks she's a cat. And I just bought new furniture. Nice, kitty. Pick her up by the nape. She's a Siamese, too. Clean my litter box! Oh, jump started, Grant. Well, I see you still resent the way Mrs. Marsh treats you. I can't say that I blame you. <laughs> Kitty's always been very fond of me, haven't you? Oh, she's got ear mites. Does she have all the instincts of a cat? With half the calories. Watch. <laughs> she had her shots. This mouse has the brain of Newt Gingrich. Now eat! Oh. Runners, take your marks. <laughs> Tell me, help me! Oh, God! <laughs> Taste it all. She ate it. I wanted it. Hey, it's Norma Desmond's house. Prelude to the afternoon of a sexually aroused gas mask. I don't feel dead. Actually, I feel pretty good. I sort of think, therefore I sort of am. Divorced, harassed by creditors. B. Lorna Luft gazes out the window. Is that Anita? The real yeah. Anita Hill? Oh, I don't think so. I'm looking for the Mano set. Oh. Going uphill is hard when you're dead. Oh. I think she's dead on her feet. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Hmm? Uh, jump the one you're with. Oh, yeah. Jump Look the one you're with. <laughs> I'll save you, Nell. What? Elf, no! <laughs> Elf. <laughs> oh, get the hose. Oh, geez, I should have had him fixed. Back on you. Back. Hmm? Persona. Interior. Same thing. I'm visibly reacting. Come on, back it up, buddy. Let's see some ID. It's so weird when people dress up their dogs. <laughs> tons. Tons. He's speaking in tons. <laughs> hmm, I'd like a dog. Oh, oh look at his feet. He's still a puppy. <laughs> so we change partners. Hmm? Gee, do you think he'll chew his own head off? I still think you should have locked him up. They're not about to leave this house after what they've witnessed. They know Hans is outside there. Pass the caramelized onions. So, more blood? I hope there's no spots on the wine glasses. Even if we could get past that creature outside, there's still the electric fence. The phone's dead. Can't get help that way. This is the female papillon. Mm. Papillette. If we could get the car... We could go for a drive. That's it. Victor! Victor! He likes me, I guess. But I'm seeing Klaus von Bülow. If you could get the keys from him... Oh, Rochester! Oh, Mary. 
I was having a little nightcap. And it got out of hand. Whoa, she's going to pull a groin muscle. Who do you think you are, pinching me? What? What? <laughs> Maybe you like some again. company. Someone like me? Whoa, how's the tumbler of Scott? <laughs> more like it. Oh, I haven't made love to a woman with teeth in so long. Don't you like me, Victor? Oh, if you were only 80. <laughs> it, mm. Oh, there's nothing like the feel of a real hip. <clears throat> you taste like a Woolworth's counter. Wait. I want you to dress in later, Hosen. Oh. Aunt is chained. Let's go outside. Outside? Let's play some shuffleboard. I think I'd like that. And then we can take a real long time to write a check somewhere. <laughs> oh, God, they're gonna sing! Mr. and Mrs. Bridge. <laughs> Was it my rippling gluteals that did it to you? job isn't so bad if you know how to handle it. Knock back a few, close my eyes, and think of England. Victor! Victor! Ah, cripes, Miss Havisham needs me. I gotta go serve this grandma. Whoa! Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Blimey, I hope I don't get attacked out here when I'm all alone wearing my spike heels, <laughs> walking through all this tall grass. It would make me particularly unstable should anything happen, like I'm attacked. I only assume there isn't some kind of mutilated hell beast running around that maybe could shred me pitilessly. <laughs> oh. Well, here's something that can cause me irreparable damage. <laughs> Anita, what's the matter with you? Don't you know me? Anita, listen to me. It's... Well, the heck with you, then. Ooh. Mm, I wish I was Harry Connick's girlfriend. I'll never get to the Pyrenees. I hear William Conrad. I think it's the Doberman gang. Stella, woof, woof, Stella. Anita. We got cats. Stay right there. Don't move. I'm coming. <laughs> Oh boy, oh boy, I've always wanted a pet. She's trained and she wears my size. <laughs> There's a girl on the roof and she thinks she's a cat. She thinks she's a cat, but she's not, no she's not. There's a girl on the roof and she thinks she's a cat. But she ain't no cat, no she ain't no cat. Are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? She's not a cat, you know. She's just from Mexico. She's not a cat. And that is that. Is that. The cat suite from Carousel. <laughs> Anita, if I call the fire department again, they'll start laughing. Anita. Where eagles dare. <laughs> oh, it's Joey Ramone. <laughs> what do you know? Anita, let me help you. I know a vet in town. She's a cat who bites her nails. <laughs> that is indigestion. Anita, wait. To catch a cat. I'll catch ya. <laughs> I'll catch ya. <laughs> Take my hand. I'm a stranger in paradise. So did they put stuffing around the cat brain so it wouldn't <laughs> rattle around inside her skull? No. Hmm. I gotta go walkies for crying out loud. Walkies! 
This is no good. We're on top of the monument. Anita. Anita. <laughs> when she floats gently to her death. Huh. Ooh. Well, so much for the landing on your feet theory. Oh, that's a nice bathrobe she's got there with the flower Lovely. print. Lovely. 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 The human eye. Oh, you hey. just pop it in and see stuff. Oh, hi. Uh, I uh, killed your cat. I'm sorry. She's unconscious, but she'll live. No. She will live. No. Will. Oh, I need a hole. She's dead. Ah, oh, nuts. Wait here. Nina, dear, come along with us now. It's Alexander's ragtime. You had a bad shock. Get out of here. Both of you. Uh, well, it's my house. Would be. It's Martin Balsam up there. Hmm? Square. Whoa, look at her run. Zoom. <laughs> Time elapsed. Just take our word for it. Doot, 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 doot. So, how's our little Sandy Duncan today? Hmm? Ow. Why don't you do something for her? I've done what I can for now. Later, an operation might be possible. You know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And... I'm reserving the eye. Let me show you. I'm over here. She's refusing species left and right, and they can't give her an eyeball? It's a Martinizer. Uh... The cellular structure is being kept alive by these electrical vibrations. Cool, huh? I use the same principle in keeping that hand alive. Eat it, Jules. Eat it, Jules. Eat it, Jules. She is a very lucky girl. She's got me for a doctor. You think that ironical? Ironical? Let me explain. Ab Cadefi Jekyll Monocker Stewart. I'm the only man alive today capable of restoring your friend's sight. And I'm very excited about it. Dr. Alexis Carell, who pioneered the transplanting of vital human organs. You always have to clench your teeth when you talk. an animal's heart alive for many years. But I'm boring this, you. He received the Nobel Prize. I got a People's Choice Award. And I, who have so far surpassed his efforts. Surely you don't want to compare yourself with Dr. Correll. <laughs> he was humane. I, too, fight to preserve life and to find the means to improve the lives of future generations. But I kill people. Your viewpoint is that narrow, ignorant one held by the medical society today, which forces me to work in a place like this, to give in to the whims of a foolish old woman because she can supply me with the funds I need to continue my work. Wow. You think I don't cry? I cry. Uh, uh. She's just a pop by an oculist. Nina? Yes, please. I, I can't see. What? Well, you have a diaper on your face, dear. Something happened. Don't think about it now. Don't think about it? Maybe. Are you listening? This is important. Yes. Mm -hmm. We must be ready if a chance comes. I remember now. It was Anita. What's going on? She... Oh, my eye! My eye! My eye! Oh, she's got Phyllis Dilleritis. Oh, whoops, that was window cleaner. Oh, sorry. Better leave. Give this chance to take effect. I'm a doctor. I'll take care of her. Jim. I'm sure you will take excellent care of her <laughs> until your plans call for something else. Or am I to be the next one, doctor? Or should I say, Herr Doctor? Oh, cells hey, next! Hey. Oh. Great Stoke, the destruction of Jared Sin. <laughs> yeah. Got all the clothes? Yes. And made my hair appointment? I took care of everything on your list while you were talking with the lawyer. Did you pick up my candy hair pants? appointment, Monday, 10 a.m., Charles of the Ritz. I am not a crook. Under Nina's name. Dun, 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 dun. I want Nina to model these later, after I've rested. You tell her. Yeah, fine, Mrs. Pinchon. Do anything for you. Hmm, not enough vinegar in the water. Streaks, hmm. They're back. With new outfits. I'll have to leave you now. Remember, I'm going to try to get us out of here tonight. Stay alive, whatever may occur. Forget about me, I won't go. Well, that'll make it easier. B, don't talk like that. I've been meaning to tell you that the whole movie. Uh, isn't she wearing her headband a little low? 
Chelsea, come here. Shepard. Mrs. Martin, ah, I realized her new body had such a satisfactory shape. Perhaps not as spectacular as the English girl, but in excellent taste. Wow. She couldn't help being amused. The stupid girl was not only modeling Mrs. March's hey, future wardrobe, hey, but Mrs. Mrs. March's future body. This is a movie for me. <laughs> so firm, so nicely rounded in places men like. <laughs> Mike, Crow, Servo, where is everybody? Sure gets lonely being magic voice. I wish there was another disembodied voice around here I could talk to. Well, sometimes it's convenient to have a man, especially when he comes cheaper than servants. Hey, you're the voiceover guy from today's movie. Tell me, what do you like? What's your favorite hobby? Making love to an 80-year-old woman in the body of a 20-year-old girl. Ew, how could you do that? She was quite harmless and, at times, even amusing. You know, I only met you a few seconds ago, but you're really yucky. I can only imagine what you think of me. So firm, so nicely rounded in places men like. That's it. Get lost, loser. Jeez, from now on I'm going to forget about romance and just get lost in my work. Commercial sign in five, four, three, two. Commercial sign now. Men. You might have knocked when you came in, Victor. I might have, yeah. I'm sorry. Don't stop your style show on my account. Does my uh, aged lock and bar disturb you? Daddy, that's unkind. Shut up. The bloom is definitely off the rose. You see, it's hard for a vain, stupid man to realize that he holds no attraction for a lovely young girl. Over. Well, I can see where it would be. On a... You're not needed now, Victor. Close the door quietly when you go out. Mm. Not going to be needed at all. Nope. That's what you're saying, isn't it? After tomorrow, when... Victor! Sit! That's enough! Get out! Not in front the of the white going slave! To be when what? Uh, when we have the picnic, which is... <laughs> thrown away like an old shoe, or old Victor. Don't ask tiresome questions. I could snap your neck. That will be enough for tonight. I want us both to get some rest. Try to sleep. But Mrs. March... That's an order! Do as I say! You're going to put your brain in me, aren't you? I just know it. Well, oh, I should get the larger bottles, more economical. Vic, uh, hi. Uh, there's someone who wants money at the door. You're not looking for me, are you? Why would a pretty young girl want to be around an old you man? Kiss my... No, no. What did you try to tell Mrs. March? No, you don't have to sleep with a crib keeper every night like me. So that's what you plan to do. Get rid of old Victor once you get all that money. I'm drunk. The only thing is, of course, it won't really be you. What do I do with a little implant now? Oh. Victor, please tell me. Yeah. Try to make sense. I am telling you. Tomorrow you'll be one of the richest women in the world. You're going to be Oprah. There's a press release. It's in the mails now. To all the major news syndicates. Orphan girl sole heir to March Million. And brain. Nina Rhodes has a lucky star. Well, this is a terrible press release. I don't understand. The next press release will be March Mansion destroyed by fire. Cinderella girl, Nina Rhodes, oh. sole survivor. Only it Is won't this what's be known you. As singing like a canary? Yes. It's a pity, too. You're nice the way you are. I'm drunk! Please don't let it happen. You could help me and B get away. Okay, well, I will. You're a rich woman. You wouldn't forget an old friend. A friend who'd saved your life, would you? Um, give me an example. Oh. 
Well, oh no, help me to the bathroom. Get out of the car. Stay there. Victor, B too. B must come too. I'm sober now. Wait a minute. Hey. Uh, so, Mike, Just where's the atomic sure. brain? I don't know. Dear Heloise, here's a tip for organizing your spice rack. Hmm? Jar lid screwed onto a lazy Susan will adequately suffice. Sign this. Uh, sign the pen? Thirty. Ow, 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 don't sign the hand, ow. Oh, my ulcer's acting up. Oh, no. Let's see here. Lick me, fat boy. Hey, hey, wait a minute! Very interesting. Polonius. It's like Roy Scheider. <laughs> Dear Mrs. March, by the time I read this, you'll be dead. Hmm? I'm going to kill Trevor Pinnock. Lord, I know I haven't been the best gigolo, but I've been the best gigolo I know how. <laughs> Knit one pearl die. Oh, go, get a needle, see my head go. That was my favorite darning needle. Darn. Hi, I'm Darren McGavin. Hey, you could do a chin puppet on him, Mike. <laughs> chin. Eat steel, lover boy. B, you've got to come with me. No, I won't go. Why should I want to go on living like this? By the way, I'm behind you. I'll get Victor to help me, and we will carry you. Yeah, well, anyway, it's so comforting to have you here. Thanks for staying. No, no, don't be alarmed. Just doing my yoga. <laughs> Want something from Victor, dear? What? Sit down, my dear. Where is she? I'm afraid you're wearing yourself oh. out with all this rushing oh. around. I don't like that. You realize she's mad, don't you, Dr. Frank? <gasps> Relax. Hurry, doctor. You've got snotums. <laughs> I'll be ready for you shortly, Mrs. March. I'll be waiting. Beep. Mrs. Partridge. <laughs> what are the odds? We both go down with hip pointers on the same day. Finally about to happen. What's about to happen? You don't know what it's been like for me, living with this ugly body of mine. Oh, here comes the diatribe. Knowing that any attention I received was not for me, but my money. Yeah, and your buns of steel. Well, nobody got any of it. No. Well, let's have at it then. I've never known what it was like to be loved. Oh, God. For myself alone. Why did you kill Victor, Mrs. March? Victor. Victor? Which one was he? Victor was a fool. Oh, okay, I was just wondering. I'm a practical woman, Dr. Frank. Now, lop a my head off. Woman. I've never been a very practical person. I suppose that makes me a fool, too, in your eyes. Yep. Of course not. Relax, Mrs. No, 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 no. Don't levitate now. Oh, that's good. I feel like I'm kissing God. Oh, yes. Oh. You're in good hands. She had gizzards in her head. <laughs> oh, because I got a brain left over now. See? Her cerebellum all rusted here. <laughs> oh, it's Grizzly the cat. Honey. Meow. I'm halfway through this. I have no idea what I'm doing. So anyway, Nina, am I boring you? Just tell me, will you? I... You know, guys, I want to go to Egypt. See the sights. Waking up, are you? Good. Hmm? I want to talk to you. Is he eating a sandwich? No, 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 no. You signed a paper making Vicky a legal guardian. 
That's right, isn't it? I did, Tony. I'll think, didn't I? That would probably work as well for me. We could stay here. None of this would have to be destroyed. We'd get a couch and maybe some pictures. You're doing better, aren't you? Why don't you try it on your own? Hmm. Well, why don't you hop down and... Oh, I wonder now if Mrs. March didn't intend blowing me up along with all the rest of this. How does that guy reach his time clock? He can't even punch <laughs> in. <It's> really... <laughs> You're a very wealthy woman now, Nina. But you have a porpoise brain. What I must decide is how to keep you and your friends available with the least amount of nuisance to myself. Hmm? I could keep you under sedation. True. Until your signature was required. You hmm. make the call. Or I could replace your brain with one more amenable. If you got anything to say about that, just jump in any time. What about Mrs. March, Doctor? Mrs. March no longer has a thing to say. She drinks from a bowl. Do you, my dear? Yeah, she's too busy licking her butt. Completely recovered, I'd say. How do you feel? Don't patronize me! I'm mad. I guess the transplant would be better. It won't hurt. And the price is really not as bad as you think. Dr. Frank had enjoyed this transplantation. Mrs. March's brain winding up in the body of a cat. Hey, voiceover guy, I'm trying to work. Poetic justice to think of autocratic Mrs. March scavenging in back alley garbage cans for her dinner. Yeah, I think I got another brain in the storeroom here. But Mrs. March doesn't take things lying down. Oh, no, 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 no. What the hell? In a cameo appearance. <laughs> now, see, this is why I don't like cats. <laughs> you blow up the nuclear pile on you. Please, no, you forgot the fabric softener. <laughs> More milk every night. Tuna, lots of tuna. Come on, come on. He's just in a machine shed. I shriek if I've tried. Whoa, Nina, uh, you run into the bed there? You all right? Nina? Nina? Hoo-ha! <laughs> yabba dabba do. <laughs> Get me. Okay, okay, my impression of the scales of justice, uh, lady. Where are my scales? Thank you, I'm the scales of justice, lady. Whoa, was she hit by a meteorite? Whoa. Oh, that's what happens when you drink in a hot tub, yeah, folks. Yep, yep. Oh. oh, radiation and open sore, just like lemon juice. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, thanks for rescuing me, but you could put a sheet over that thing. Ooh. You've got just enough time to change your pumps. They're all wrong. Oh, you know, as long as I'm here, I'm going to grab my eye. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Josh, you fit the battle of Jericho, Jericho. It's my heart that's a suffering. in it. Ooh, Blackie drool. What a day. Now she'll step into a rat trap, get hit by a lightning, meet the Hudson brothers. <laughs> Well, there goes that thing. Oh no, Tara. Mrs. March did not intend to let her money get out of sight. She would follow that girl. Sometime, someplace, revenge would come. But that's the subject of the sequel. It's in development right now, and we've got a big memo. And... I suggest they placate the old woman with a little fancy feast. <laughs> Achtung! Achtung! Oh, Der Amerikanskerzenstäben! Und auf sind dann auch mal wieder! Ach, halt! The 400 Blows. 
please let me die. Oh, shame on you, Joseph Miskelly. Bad director. The 7 o'clock news. Jack Pollock's from Yes, Mrs. De Wiggins. Case <laughs> of the movie, Mrs. De Wiggins. Oh, he came up with. Fine, fine. No use calling attention to yourself. I'm going to be charitable and just say, I hope all these people were forced to do this movie at gunpoint. No, they chose to do this movie. Well, except for Xerxes the Cat. You know, Xerxes went on to a long and distinguished oh, really? career. He was a favorite of Nicholas <laughs> Ray's. And the oh, way it Mike! 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 Yes, Eleanor. Ready? I was born ready. Oh, okay. Oh, Kalu, Kalei. Okay, mm -hmm. Tom. Okay. Hit it. Ready. <clears throat> Doctor Richard Kimball is a fugitive on the run from the law, but in another part of the world, Green Acres Hank Kimball is also on the run from the law. Uh, oh, uh, Mr. Nelson. Uh, I'm on the run. Well, uh, not actually on the run. I'm uh, being pursued and I'm walking quickly. <laughs> you, know, you see, I'm in flight from the law. Well, not the whole law, uh, actually just parts of the law. <laughs> when I say parts, I should really say men. Not to say there aren't women in the police force. Uh, there are some women. I'm just not sure of the ratio. <laughs> I'm also being followed by a one-armed man, or a man with a prosthetic arm. I'm sure he had two arms when he was born. Well, uh, well, thanks very much. Good night. Boy, mm. crow buddy, wow! You know mm -hmm. you set a stool down next to that premise and just milked it for everything it was worth. <laughs> Move. Well, thank you very much. Good thank job, McLeod. Oh, <laughs> okay. We got a bunch of letters. Letters. Here. Oh, I love Ooh, letters. 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 Delicious letters. Ooh. And uh, well, let's start with this one here. This first one's from Eric Halloran. Halloran. Hey, put that <laughs> up on still store there. Hi, Eric. Cambot. Eric says, "Dear Satellite of Love," which is a good start. I'm a 13-year-old boy, and. Uh, Please. Sorry. It's annoying. Every time I read the paper. I'm writing to say I really enjoy the show, and I really think it's a laugh riot. <laughs> I'm also writing to ask a question. Here we go. Okay. What does the K stand for in MST3K? Uh, I got this one, Mike. <clears throat> Eric, that K stands for Carl. Carl was the man who invented lightning. Thank you very much. Thank lightning? You. Yeah, Carl. Good yeah. answer. All right. Well, let's move on here. Uh, okay. This one's kind of a special... Uh, uh, check this out. Just a letter to let you know. This one's from Ann Feldstein, by the way. Why don't you put that up on Hi, Ann. there? <laughs> Ann, thank you for What's writing. Just a letter to let you guys know how much I love your show. Oh, and thank how you. I especially love Tommy Gunn Servo. Mm. Wow! This is my favorite, and I love, he is my favorite, and I love his songs. If I could be on the Satellite of Love, I would sit and talk to Tom all day oh, long. Ann. Devotedly, oh, sweet Ann. Ann Feldstein. Hey, Ann. Uh, Mike, it. who's that from? Uh, Ann Feldstein? Oh, yeah, Feldstein. Yeah. Yep, yeah. yep. Got a big stack of letters from Feldstein down in my locker. What? That's right. Yep. I, you know, I got a bunch of that from her, too. Oh. You finally got around to writing you, huh? Well, well you trollop, you tart Ann. Oh, you hey, hey. Of pops. that's Ann. Sorry. We're just no kidding. offense, Ann. Just a little bitter there. Uh, if we can continue on here, oh, please. Please, please. This do. is from uh, Eric Hansen. Eric. Another Eric. <laughs> Another Eric. <laughs> Hansen Halloran. I smell a conspiracy. Mm. Anyway, put that uh, letter up on still store there. Neat. And Actually, I'll show you a picture, too. Dear Lords of Lunar Laughter. <laughs> That's us! <awesome. laughs> I am one of the millions of fans or misties who are forced to pump MST3K into their veins. So addicted am I that I have constructed a robot companion to assist me in alleviating the tribulations of bad cinematography. My robot, or more accurately, puppet, pictured here with me is a what? replica of TV's wise-cracking crow built out of household gadgets. And let's put the uh, picture up there now. Hey, look at that. Well, now, that's, a nice that's very flattering. But it should be good because if you'll notice, that's not Eric at all. That's George Lucas. Wow. What? THX developer. Look at you can he even is. see the graying temples at the side. How he just shaved that? his beard and tried to fool us. Oh, well, no George. good, George Lucas. <laughs> Thank you. That's from Eric. That's anyway. Thanks, clever, Eric. Huh? Hey, why Thank don't you, you uh, do the address for the info club? Okay, send your tinctures and other missives to the Letters. Mystery Science Theater Letters. Information yeah, Club, in Post Office Box 5325, tincture. Hopkins, Minnesota 55343. Do it today. Well, I guess that's it. What do you think, mad guys? Mm -hmm. I'm Dr. Frank, physician and bon vivant. <laughs> oh, Dr. Frank, there's a Dr. Fist here to see you. Well, send him right in. 
Hey, Wayne, I'm not going to fall for that one again. He really wants to consult with you, Dr. Frank. He says it's very important. Important? Consult? Well, I am a doctor after all. Send him right in. Come in. <laughs> well, hello, Dr. Fist. Tell me, what is your... Sometimes it's just too easy.